Hi, my name is Michael or you can call me MBL Designs and today we're at Klossfestivalen 2019 for the Swedish Eiffel Show. So one of the you know, really cool models we have, have at Klossfestivalen 2019 is these ice sculptures. So we have a woman, a child and a seahorse statue which are mostly built out of one by two uh, transparent bricks and then lit up with lights on the inside and they just look so beautiful and are really eye-catching to all of the people who visit Klossfestivalen this year. So we do also have this uh, roller coaster here, Cyclone, which is from New York and it's a really massive and really cool model and it actually continues over here to an amusement park with a lot of different rides as well and you can see a lot of cool and funny minifigure placed all, all around this model as well. So a lot of details. And then we have this Ferris wheel right here, which is really, really impressive. Uh, it's quite big, but we do also have a much larger one over there as well. And if you thought the first one was really impressive, you're really going to be impressed with the other one. So here we have this really, really huge Ferris wheel. And I'm quite tall personally, so seeing this, it's really impressive. And it's completely built with Lego, including all of the strings in between here. And the funny thing with this model and the Ferris wheel before, and also the models over here, that they are actually from some of uh, our uh, guests at Klossfestivalen, which are visiting from the Czech Republic. And we have this uh, Inca Maya temple and this whole nature part as well, but also this temple right here. And it's really fun to have some visitors from the Czech Republic showing off their cool creations as well. And you can also see all kinds of different minifigures scattered around and making all kinds of small scenes which are really interesting. And you can basically stand here for days just looking at different details. So here we have a model made by two kids, quite young but really talented. So it's a model from Star Wars The Clone Wars. And for fans of either the TV show or just the Star Wars era in general, this really captured the whole theme of Star Wars The Clone Wars, especially to me, who's a big fan of Star Wars The Clone Wars. And it also continues over here with a base which is being attacked, uh, which is really impressive to say the least. And then we do have some really cool models right here, which are alternate builds for official Lego sets. So if you have any of these sets, so these are potential models you could make. And this is someone to inspire kids and adults alike to use the sets you already have and try to think of new solutions and maybe make a new set out of it. Yeah. Here we have a really impressive train landscape where we have all kinds of details, different buildings and the trains going all throughout it. And it's really impressive to see all of the different details and just the attention to detail. And yeah, here we also see one of the trains going around with the different events they've been to and stuff like that. So it's really fun to see so much detail and effort put into a creation like this. And uh, if I remember right, this is also a community build. So a lot of people have worked together to make this possible using uh, or building different modules and putting it all together at events like Kloss Westvalen, for example. Uh, and yeah, you can see so many cool things, like you have the Quickie Mart from Simpsons, we have the Mystery Machine from Scooby-Doo, we even have the Batmobile. So there's a lot of different details you can look for. You can, yeah, you can spend a lot of time trying to see all kinds of different things throughout this model. Uh, we do have interiors to the different uh, buildings here and yeah, I'm just so impressed with all of the details 
in this model. It's really, really impressive to see it. basically a story come through with this whole landscape. So, so the next thing we have is a fan favorite at basically any LEGO convention, but especially Kloss Westfalen. And it's a GBC, which is a great ball contraption. So for those who don't know, the whole concept is that you have different modules that move balls around in basically a circle. So we have all of these different modules and they are not turned down uh, at the moment, but the whole concept is that, is that the balls travel forwards through all of these different modules uh, and then just come all around and just goes in circles. And it's really cool to see all of the ingenuity and just creativity with all of these models. And some are really creative, like this one, Monkey Pong, which is a reference to Donkey Kong, the arcade game. And then stuff like this, where the ball actually travels upwards over the table gap right there. And uh, yeah, it's such an impressive thing to see because this really puts the Lego elements to uh, good use and puts an emphasis to what you can actually make possible with the engineering and programming that comes with trying to make all of this work. Because all of these modules, I, I think there's at least over 20 modules right here, and all of them have to work simultaneously with one, uh, one another. So if one breaks down, the other, all of them have to work together, and that's really cool to see all of them work together in such a big way, actually. So here we have some vehicle models. So here we have some LEGO system models that are infused with some LEGO technique, but looks really realistic based on real official uh, vehicles and trucks and stuff like that, which are really impressive to see in this larger LEGO scale. And they've really managed to capture all, all of the details of the cars and trucks that we actually see in real life. Yeah, and here we do also have some Swedish uh, fire engines, which are then based on real Swedish fire engines that we ha have here in Sweden. And it's really fun to see because fire engines are really popular with LEGO. They make several sets every year and kids love them. So it's really fun to see the Swedish style of fire engines put into Lego form, uh, which is also something that you don't normally see because it's traditionally Swedish. So this is something only the Swedish Lego community can bring to the whole Lego community worldwide as well. Uh, going over here, we have a bit of a military based operation here, which is really impressive with a mountaintop right here and what it looks like a top secret base inside. We have like a medical camp out here with some guys eating pizza, which looks really lovely. And one military soldier just fishing around, which looks really fun as well. Uh, a lot of details in this model as well, with a lot of cool minifigures. Going on here, we have some really impressive Lego Technic models. So we have two helicopters working over here. We do have some type of um, remote controlled vehicle as well, which is really cool. I, if I remember right, I've seen this uh, roaming around on the floor, which is really cool to see. And over here we have a storage lifter, I think, yeah. So we have some storage uh, boxes at the bottom and this lift basically lifts them up and it's a really impressive model and uh, yeah, it's really cool to see Lego Technic put to this use and using different motors and stuff to actually make them work uh, and actually lifting these storage boxes at the bottom, which is really, really impressive. Yeah, so here we have another fan favorite, especially after the Lego movie was released a couple of years ago. We have the classic space uh, city, basically with the whole monorail display going all around and uh, a lot of the old classic space sets on display and also some of the new ones like Ibanez Spaceship from the Lego movie and also some mocks that are infused with the whole uh, color scheme and the idea of classic space which is really, really cool. And 
it's just so impressive to see all of these models because uh, you know that fans are really impressed and admire this type of design. So it's really fun to see uh, fans make a whole city like this with classic space. So here we have the traditional Swedish year with all of the month of the year and keeping up with Swedish tradition. So we have some exercises, which is uh, kind of the New Year's oath we make to each other in the beginning of the year. Then walking towards later in the year, we have a lot of Swedish uh, celebrations that are, aren't really traditional in any other country. So they are really tied to our culture and stuff like that. So it's really fun to see that in Lego form. Um, People, for people here in Sweden, it's really fun because we can kind of make jokes about how we celebrate different holidays and stuff like that. Uh, and it's really fun to see in Lego form because we're not really used to seeing it in the tiny plastic people like the minifigures we have here on display. So it's really fun to see. It's somewhat of a satire kind of uh, depiction of what we usually do uh, year to year. So here we have a really impressive pirate model, which is, uh, I'd say, really inspired by the Pirates of Caribbean movies and just pirate culture overall. We do have this really cool pirate ship over there. And then walking over to this uh, castle looking thing, we have really cool details on the outside. But underneath everything, we have some really cool details underneath with some prison cells and also a treasure chamber underneath which is really, really impressive. This actually won third place of the Exhibit uh, Prize at Kloss Festival in 2019, so that was really fun. Walking over here, we have a really impressive model of the Hogwarts castle. So this is not only based on the movies, but also takes influence from the books. So we have the Great Hall, which is really rememberable from the Harry Potter movies. But right underneath, we have the kitchen where all of the elves prepares the food for all of the students, which is more inspired by the books because they didn't really delve into that in any of the movies. And continuing on, we have a lot of the different rooms from the Hogwarts castle. And uh, same with a lot of other models here at Kloss Festivalen. You can spend hours just looking at the different rooms and seeing different characters that you didn't see before. And a lot of the rooms actually tell the story of Harry Potter. So we have at the bottom, for example, the Chamber of Secrets and Tom Riddle re releasing um, the snake and all kinds of cool details all around. And also going over to the tower here and up to the sick ward to all of the different classrooms. And it's just really, really cool to see such attention to detail to both the books and the movies. Because mostly nowadays the movies get the most attention, but the books also did bring a lot to the story of Harry Potter, of course. Um, and continuing on here, we have some aliens from the movie Aliens, which is really cool to see. Not a movie that gets a lot of the attention in the LEGO community, so it's really fun to see at least a few models based on uh, aliens as well. Uh, moving over here, we have some really cool brickheads from the builder's uh, childhood. We do have a Donald, uh, a Donald Trump, we have a Deadpool, we have the South Park gang, we do have Mario and Luigi. We have uh, also some Swedish characters like Bamse, Karlsson Potaket, and also Pippi, uh, Pippi Longstrump, or also known in the rest of the world as Pippi Longstockings, which is really fun. Uh, a bit more tied to the Swedish type of things we have here. We do also have a classic space themed Mini Cooper, for, you know, because the builder is really into classic space, is also part you know, of the classic space uh, city that we showed before. Um, and we have this really cool plane, which is based on an actual plane we have, have here in Sweden, which is really cool as well. And here we also have a train that's based on a specific train we also have here in uh, Sweden, which is really detailed and uh, a lot of people recognize.
Yeah, so here we have also really cool fantasy-based models. So we have this storybook where we have this uh, creature coming out of the story and also the tree in the background. And it's really cool because uh, like storybooks, this really tells a story about what's going on. And if I remember right, there's also some backstory to this model. And that's a theme that goes through Malin, who bu uh, built this model and the two next here really puts an emphasis to the story behind them and puts a really uh, big depth uh, in uh, uh, the story behind and the motivation for these models. And right here we have, for example, uh, a, last, uh, a last teardrop of pain and hope, which is a really moving uh, art piece, I would actually say, um, in my opinion, where we have two different side battling inside of uh, uh, lonesome tear drop of hope and pain, which is really, really impressive. And this model is also really cool because we have a lot of trans clear bricks on the outside, which really uh, makes this uh, tear drop effect really pop as a feature. And here we have worlds inside of me which is also a really cool concept that has a backstory as well, which is similar to a split personality type of effect. And you can really see that in this model with the two different sides yeah, matching yeah, or not matching each other. And the detail she managed to capture in the face is just beautiful to say the least. And really impressive was that this model was actually featured in the American Lego magazine, The Brick Journal. And they also made a, a whole spread in the paper or in the magazine with uh, how the model was built and all kinds of stuff connected to the actual build of the model. So it was really fun for a fellow Swedish uh, builder to actually get featured in the Brick Journal. Here we actually have the first place winner of the uh, Kloss Festivalen 2019 Exhibitor uh, Award. Uh, and it's completely understandable with this really impressive city landscape and also with the monorail going all around the city. And you can see so many cool details like the newspaper stand right there and all of the minifigures just walking through their day, doing their normal business, maybe visiting the bank today or having a snack at the restaurant. It's just an impressive model that really captured the yes, normal day in my life type of feel. And the monorail is probably the most impressive thing, just going all around the model and really capturing the whole city vibe of this model. Here we have some models that are based on cartoons, especially Disney cartoons. So we have two models right here with Clogsworth and Lemire from Beauty and the Beast and also the famous Rose from Beauty and the Beast, which is really impressive. And continuing on, we have some really, really impressive uh, Toy Story uh, models. And here we can see the huge army of Buzz Lightyear minifigures to uh, replicate the scenes from uh, Toy Story 2, the very popular uh, Disney Pixar movie. Uh, all of these are created by Bricks by Stefan, and it's really impressive to see how he managed to capture all of the details from the animation, like the um, green army man lifting the walkie-talkie, and to see also and this room wall from the Toy Story movie with all of the iconic characters in front of it. And this actually won the uh, second prize of the Kloss Festival in 2019 Exhibitor's uh, uh, competition, which was really, uh, really understandable as well. Then we can see her here from Toy Story 2 as well, where uh, Woody is getting um, redone after his arm got torn off in Toy Story 2. Continuing on with other movie scenes, we have some really iconic scenes from some 80s movies. We have Back to the Future, right before Marty McFly goes back to his own time and uh, 
after he has tried to fix everything that got messed up in the story to begin with. Then we do have this really cool ED-209 from Robocop, which is a franchise that doesn't, it doesn't really get that much attention in the LEGO community from what I've seen, so it's really fun to see a model uh, such like this at Klossfestvalen. Uh, we do have some snow speeders from Star Wars um, Episode 5, which is really, really cool and they really managed to capture all of the angles in the actual models a bit better than any of the official LEGO sets LEGO have released in the past uh, 20 years or so. Uh, and as I've said before, it's really fun to see uh, uh, builders make stuff from Aliens. It's a franchise that it doesn't really get that much attention in my opinion, and it truly deserves it. And here we have a really cool model based on uh, aliens with some xenomorph invading the building on the roof right there. So here we have, have a really impressive community build with over, I think it's over five builders that made this concept for Mars 2050, which is the concept that we could possibly live on the planet Mars. And it's really fun to see this whole model come together, considering that multiple people worked on this and planned it out and just tried to make it work in the best possible way uh, and really make the whole uh, idea work together. We also have a really fun cameo, I'd say, with Elon Musk's statue as well. And yes, we do see some of the nano figures that LEGO have used with astronauts placed uh, a bit here and there throughout the model, considering that this is not minifigure scale, it's actually uh, micro minifigure scale. So it's a really impressive model, and it also includes some light effects as well, which really makes it pop, in my opinion. So this is a model that a lot of people who are fans of either the movie Serenity or the TV show Firefly will really, really like, or if you just like big spaceships, basically. Uh, being a fan of Firefly myself, this is really impressive to see in LEGO form and the builders of this, Emma and Stefan, did not hesitate on making it as big as they possibly could and also as detailed they possibly could because they packed a lot of details into this model and even including uh, some interior features as well because the Serenity ship is really, really massive compared to a human being or in this uh, form a minifigure so they did actually manage to build some interiors which they actually show off here um, to show how big it actually would be on the inside compared to the outside which is really impressive and similar to some of the other licenses Firefly and Serenity isn't something that a lot of people make models based of so to see a model like this put to good use in LEGO form is just really impressive, to say the least. Uh, continuing here, we have a really cool ukulele, um, which is just really impressive. And from far away, you would not actually believe it was LEGO, but it actually is. So everything is LEGO on this, including the strings as well, which is really, really cool. Um, Going over here, we have uh, some you know, buildings which are really detailed on the outside and really work well together. And I really like the effect they did on the whole uh, ground of the whole thing using the uh, light bluish gray tiles to use for the type of gravel ground that uh, they're walking on, which is really, really cool. Continuing over here, we have another uh, community build uh, behi uh, behind the wall. So we have this post-apocalyptic wasteland outside and past this wall, they've built this somewhat of a utopia uh, after the whole apocalypse to make living a little bit better. Even though they live in a post-apocalyptic world, they've tried to make a home for themselves and this is the result. And, uh, uh, I can say personally, this is, is a place I would want to live in. It, it looks really cool. I love all of the architecture 
Yeah, it's a mixture of modern design and some Asian design as well, and it's just really, really impressive, to say the least. And going with the whole post-apocalyptic, we have some vehicles that would fit really uh, into that whole post-apocalyptic wasteland type of theme we have here. Continuing on, we have a really cool Star Wars model, uh, a market outpost which is really in spite of a lot of different places from the Star Wars universe. Yeah, in my mind, this really reminds me of the newly opened Star Wars land in the US, um, which is really impressive with a lot of different marketplaces. We can see a lot of cool minifigures walking around. We do also see some stormtroopers here and there, which is really cool. And, um, yeah, just a lot of details to say the least. We do also see a landing platform with uh, some loading and offloading right there to really capture the whole living atmosphere vibe of the whole model, which is really cool. And continuing on, we have behind the wall set up here where we have more of the backside of the buildings. And as I said before, it's a really impressive model with a lot of details as well. Here we have a few different models with, uh, for example, Brickheads from Final Fantasy, which is also a franchise that not enough people build stuff from. Personally, I'm not that aware of Final Fantasy, but I know it's a really big fan favorite for a lot of people. So it's uh, really fun to see uh, Brickheads uh, from Final Fantasy. Uh, because Brickheads is something that have grown a lot more popular with the most recent years. So here we have a Scarf Shield Gate from Star Wars Rogue One. And for people who have seen the movie, this is the shield gate that guards uh, the planet Scarf. So uh, unreg unregistered people don't get into the Scarf uh, planet uh, unregistered. Which is really impressive, and we do have some light effects under all of the trans blue studs, which is a really cool detail. And they really managed to capture all of the details from uh, the actual uh, gate from the movie, which is really impressive. Uh, walking over here, we do have some really cool micro builds from the Transformers movies, uh, which is really impressive. We have the Autobots logo right there and then micro models of all of the Transformers, both in their car forms and also in their robot forms as well. And then we also have a Transformers logo right there in front of them, and also a work in progress of Bumblebee from Transformers 3. Um, here we have a, a Typical Swedish house, I'd say, from Örebro, which is a really cool building with a lot of cool details on the outside and minifigures walking all around the whole model, which is really cool. And continuing on, we have some really cool medieval style models right here uh, with a lot of details with uh, like gambling going on on the outside there. Some really cool details with all of the vegetation with the tree on the side and some leaves on top on the yeah, roof of the building, which is really impressive. Um, here we have some other models which are really impressive as well. We have some uh, glass blowing right here with a cool light up effect in the furnace. We have this jungle temple, which is probably one of my favorite uses of levitation and just overall the vegetation overall, because it's so detailed and they managed to use so many uncommon pieces for trees. For example, the pieces here on the trees are typically used as flippers for the old dinosaurs Lego used to make in the 90s. So to see them used for palm trees is really impressive. Uh, continuing on with the same builder, we have some also medieval type builds and temples which are really impressive with the architecture that they came up with themselves and a really cool part use is the dome pieces on the roofs right here are made out of the uh, star wars planet set so it's one single mold and they managed to use it for something they were not intended to be used to and that's 
a really cool effect with, with Lego pieces to use a piece for something it was not intended to. We have also a really cool Egyptian build, which is also something not a lot of people make buildings uh, or mocks based on. Yeah, so it's really cool to see uh, some people use some of the old printed Egyptian uh, pieces for the walls with the, all of the hieroglyphs and stuff like that. Here we have a really cool mock that's uh, from the LEGO users group Rebelog and uh, this was actually made to uh, go uh, coexist with a whole f uh, series that a lot of the uh, Rebel Lug members did together. So it was a community build that all all the, I think it's over seven models that went together to s tell a story. And this was one of the models with the clone turbo tank trying to enter this uh, yeah, um, city that has uh, been uh, under attack, if I remember right, which is really, really impressive. And the clone turbo tank is the most eye-catching thing, but I really love all of the uh, colors they used for all of the levitation in this model as well, which is really eye-popping. Continuing with some other more medieval type builds, I really like the different techniques used for different trees, which we don't really see that often, uh, which is really, really cool. Um, and the whole tower design on this model is uh, really impressive as well. One cool detail is that they actually used both old and new colored gray pieces on the tower to make it look a bit older, which is really impressive. Here we have a minifigure battle with some minifigures on horses, with spears, with uh, uh, um, arrows and all kinds of stuff, which is uh, really cool. And here is something really tied to Sweden, which is Orgenges Trollet, which is an actual place in Sweden. And they really captured this building in great detail. And for a lot of people who know this building, will recognize it immediately. Uh, and as I said before, it's really fun to see these things that are tied to Sweden in some way or shape or form, which is really impressive to see. Yeah, here we have this uh, cathedral, which is based in Europe. I don't re uh, remember exactly where in Europe this is, but it is based on a real building, uh, which is really, really impressive. And I like all of the different the building techniques and all of the different colors they use to really capture this uh, building uh, so close to the original building as possible. So now we've come to my favorite area, which is the superhero builds. And starting off, we have this really cool Arkham Asylum build, which is the main uh, prison from the Batman comic books, where all of Batman's famous villains are prisoned. And we can clearly see here that all of the prisoners have escaped and are wreathing havoc at Arkham Asylum, which is really cool. We have some details with this building levels being uh, having built put out from the building but it is modular so you can put them back into the building and have it complete and moving towards here we have some of the best models right here i may be a bit biased because these are my models of course so <laughs> starting off we have star wars snoke's throne room from the lost jedi episode 8 and this is one of the few models i have based on star wars but my main interest is, of course, superheroes. So, uh, so we, have mo uh, we have different mocks based on Avengers Endgame that most recently came out. We have also the Avengers Infinity War Titan fight. And continuing on, we also have the Avengers Infinity War Wakanda fight, which is, is from the same movie, Avengers Infinity War. And continuing on, we have Iron Man's Hall of Armor, which we've seen in several Iron Man movies by this point. And we do have a few smaller models based on Thro uh, Thanos' throne. We have the Vulture Wings from Spider-Man Homecoming. And we also have uh, Ghost Rider's motorcycle from the comic books. And finishing off, we have Nightmare Batman, which is 
probably one of my favorite scenes from a Batman movie, just with the whole concept of that scene. So that was a quick guide of all of the models that were on display at Kloss Festival in 2019. And we have so many talented builders here in Sweden, so we wanted to show some of them off here at Kloss Festival. Some of them will be featured on future episodes or have already been featured on the Swedish A Full Show. But if you want to see more of my models and mocks that are made before or in the future, you can check me out on my social media and my YouTube channel. But if you want to see more of the models that Sweden have to offer, you can stay tuned and watch the Swedish A Full Show here on YouTube.